Imagine opening your mailbox to find an anonymous letter filled with detailed knowledge about your personal life, secrets and activities. A chilling thought, isn't it? This was the reality for residents of Circleville, Ohio in the late 70s. The quiet, everyday life was shattered when these unsettling, threatening letters began to appear. Delivered with no return address, postmarked from the nearby, the letters were as mysterious as they were intimidating. They were intimidating. They contained personal details, intimate knowledge about the recipient's lives and ominous threats. A disturbing invasion of privacy, these letters brought a palpable sense of fear to the small town. And the sender? An unknown entity, a faceless menace who seemed to know everything about everyone. Who could it be? A neighbor, a friend? The fear of the unknown started to creep into the daily lives of Circleville's residents. In a small town where everyone knows everyone, the fear and suspicion began to grow and no one was safe. The case took a sinister turn when Mary Gillespie, a school bus driver, became a main target of the letters. Accusations of an illicit affair with the superintendent of schools were penned in an anonymous letter, and the allegations didn't stop there. The writer seemed to have an uncanny knowledge of Mary's personal life, as if they were watching her every move. But the plot thickened even further when Mary's husband, Ron, received a letter of his own. The letter, filled with veiled threats, claimed that Ron was under surveillance. The fear and paranoia that had been slowly creeping into their lives was now at their doorstep. As the accusations grew, so did the tension. Ron and his sister-in-law believed they had unmasked the writer, leading to a confrontation that ended in blows. But then, tragedy struck. Ron was found dead in his crashed car, a gun nearby. Yet the fingerprints on the weapon didn't match Ron's. The tension in Circleville was reaching a boiling point and the mystery was far from over. Paul Freshour, the brother-in-law of Ron Gillespie, was convicted of sending the threatening letters and sentenced to prison. Yet the conviction was riddled with controversy. Many questioned the evidence against Freshour and doubts about his guilt persisted. Here's where the plot gets even murkier. Even while Freshour was locked away, the letters didn't stop. They continued to arrive, postmarked from Columbus, just as before. After serving 10 years, Freshour was released on parole in 1994. Throughout his imprisonment and following his release, he maintained his innocence. His release sparked renewed speculation about the true identity of the Circleville letter writer. Was the real culprit still out there? Or had they just managed to cast doubts on Freshour's guilt? The Circleville letters case remains one of the most intriguing unsolved mysteries in American true crime history, a tantalizing enigma that continues to captivate to this day. This story, with its blend of mystery, suspicion and ongoing speculation, keeps us questioning. Who really wrote the Circleville letters?